चलते चलते भी आपका स्वागत है मैं हूं शेखर गुप्ता हुबली में यहां की बी वी बी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज में जो अब यूनिवर्सिटी है और मेरे साथ एक बहुत दिलचस्प मेहमान हैं आज चार मेहमान हैं उसमें गुरुराज देश देश पांडे हैं जो कि बहुत बड़े ऑन्टरप्रेन्योर हैं सिलिकन वैली में आप छाए हुए हैं बहुत आपने पैसा बनाया और उसके बाद आपने सोचा कि सारा जीवन आपका सिर्फ भलाई में या चैरिटी में या फिलेंथ्रोपी में लगाना है और फिलेंथ्रोपी में आपकी दिलचस्पी ज़्यादा उद्यमी लोगों को बनाने में है प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग में है समस्याओं को हल करने में है आप श्रवणी पवार सिर्फ उनतीस साल की और आप इस बात का उदाहरण है कि जो आप करना चाहते हैं वो संभव है क्योंकि इतनी छोटी उम्र में और बहुत बेसिक एजुकेशन के बाद में आपने एक बहुत अच्छा बिजनेस सेटअप किया है तीन करोड़ आपका टर्नओवर हो गया है जिसमें देश पांडे फाउंडेशन ने मदद की और ये आपके दो क्रिएशंस हैं क्योंकि आप विमेन एम्पावरमेंट कर रही हैं और विमेन सिक्योरिटी गार्ड्स को ट्रेन कर रही हैं कितने गार्ड्स को अभी तक आपने ट्रेन किया और नौकरी दिलाई अभी हमने ट्रेन किए सेवन हंड्रेड प्लस अभी हमारे पास फिलहाल टू हंड्रेड प्लस ऑन रोल है हाँ और आपका नाम क्या है सुमंगला और आपका सावित्री जी तो ये अच्छा उदाहरण है कि आपका जो प्रोजेक्ट है वो चल रहा है और ये आइडिया चल सकते हैं हर जगह ऑन्टरप्रेन्योरशिप अवेलेबल है भारत में हम तो कुछ भी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व नहीं कर सकते हैं लेकिन जो लोग प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करने के इच्छा है ना उनको तो हम सपोर्ट करते हैं सपोर्ट करते हैं फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू टेल अस वाई डिड यू थिंक ऑफ विमेन सिक्योरिटी गार्ड बिकॉज देर इज नो शॉर्टेज ऑफ मेल सिक्योरिटी गार्ड इन इंडिया आई वॉन्टेड टू मेक इन समथिंग इनोवेशन बिकॉज आई हैड मैनी आइडियाज बिफोर स्टार्ट इन सेफ हैंड्स लाइक गिविंग ट्रेनिंग ऑन अगर बच्ची का सूखी सेफ हैंड्स इज योर कंपनी एंड योर ब्रांड नेम आई सी सेफ हैंड्स ट्वेंटी फोर इंटू सेवन दैट्स कम फ्रॉम एन डी टी वी <laughs> so I had many ideas. Then I thought that is all the same thing what other people also doing, and there is no innovation. So I thought, let me bring something, you know, which where the women is not existing. So I thought the women can be a good security guard in the industries. Hmm. So I thought this will, you know, fill the gap because many clients will prefer to have a lady guards, especially in the hospitals, school colleges, and apartments, hmm. and ladies hostels. Right. So I thought there is a demand and uh, there is no supply. We hmm. thought this is a good opportunity for the business as well, hmm. and this is a good opportunity for the women to come in the do male-dominated profession. And you started that at 23 years of age. Yeah. So what made you think of becoming entrepreneur at 23, and what took you to Mr. Desh Pandey? I didn't know that I'm going to start the business and this will be a this much big. I just thought that this is an idea and I have to work it. I didn't realize that this will be a big and this will make me a more profit and uh, I will have a more gross of uh, money in my account. But I only thought that this will be a process of satisfying myself and satisfying the people who are around me because if I would have done my uh, master degree and other things I would have got a job, secure job. but i would have not satisfied with myself so i thought this will be a great opportunity for me so because what? when i thought i have to do if i don't do then i won't take so what is the revenue now it's 3 crores 3 crores 3 crores i like that so so they should tell us the story of when she uh, how you found her and how she found you because well, she she's a good good brand ambassador yeah, for you yeah So you know, Shaker. I think our philosophy as a foundation has boiled down to something very simple. There are three types of people in the world. There are some people who are oblivious to everything; don't have to worry about them. Some people who see a problem and complain about it. Some people who see a problem and get all excited about it. And the only difference between an impoverished community and a vibrant community is a mix of these people. So if you go to Boston, where I live, or Silicon Valley. entrepreneurship is in so much vogue that everybody is looking for a problem to solve right as a result no obvious problem does not get solved right right impoverished communities people you know problems become chronic they get stuck and then they and they do, you complain. become you become resigned to them yeah and then right. you become a victim right and so right. what happens is that uh, they just choose to complain right and so all the programs that we do in the sandbox right. is to encourage people to become problem solvers as opposed to complainers So Shravani actually came as a student, and she went through a program for seven months. You are the first pass. She graduated in uh, social work, I think. 
No, no. She did MSW. MSW. And then BSW. And then came to the foundation. We run a thing called the fellowship program, where it's a seven months program. For social entrepreneurship. For social entrepreneurship. And it's a, they learn work ethic, how to communicate, the confidence, uh, failing, entrepreneurship, all of that stuff. At the end of the program, you know, usually about maybe three, four, five percent of the students actually start something on their own. And she was one of our stars who jumped in and decided to do this thing on her own. And, and this sort of, you know, convinces me that this is the only way to solve problems. And she had no capital besides no her capital. ambition and her idea. She pretty much bootstrapped herself. Right. You know, maybe we hired a couple of security guards, but the credit goes to her, not right. to us. Right. Uh, and when did she bring this idea to you, women security guards? Well, I, th I, think, I think she was really hung up on this women empowerment. She, so she was into, how can I improve the lives of women? And ultimately, she latched onto the fact that it's only if people make a little bit more money that they can send their kids to school, you know, have a better health care, all that kind of stuff. And so she came up with this idea that, uh, you know, there's no lady women guards, and there's a lot of places where they prefer lady guards as opposed to men. And, and she just launched it, and then it wasn't a, a straight line, just like any other right. startup, right. but she made it. So, so uh, you had no capital when you started? Yeah, no capital. And before joining for DF, I didn't know how to use the computer system. Well. Hmm. So and now you now you talk of three crores as if it's embarrassing. It's too little, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> could you talk of a, think of a crore when you started? No, I have never seen uh, fifty thousand rupees is in my hand. Right. So when I received a check of one lakh twenty-five thousand rupees, it was very from Deshpande Foundation. Yes. Yes. From that 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 was your initial capital. Initial capital. Yes. And what did you do with that money then? We invested on the uniforms and the registration process. So, Desh, why entrepreneurship as a solution? Why not charity? You know, uh, give people more food, better food, give people uh, better education, give people better health care. That is the classical model. Well, you know, you that's leap what the, You leapfrogged it. Yeah, that's what the government does. Right. That's what a lot of the philanthropists are doing. But I think that that's not sustainable. You know, in fact, I live in Boston. We have MIT, we have Harvard, and we have a similar sandbox in Lowell Lawrence. In spite of all that wealth, Lowell, Lowell and Lawrence, huge unemployment, everything else, problems don't get solved. Mostly because people try to come up with solutions and, and drop them into these areas. Mm. So the new thing that we are experimenting with, which we are, feel pretty good about, is that you don't solve anybody's problems, mm. but you just let people solve their own problems, mm. But you can't just leave them alone. Hmm. You have to give them a hand. So you have other success stories besides her, so tell us about some more. Oh, tons of them, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, for example, farmers. Every farmer is an entrepreneur, and they're very, very motivated by, by making more income. And the biggest multiplier for a farm is water. Right. So we came up with this solution called farm ponds, where you dig a hole 100 feet by 100 feet by 15 feet. And, and Ratan Tata said, sure, I'll help you. So he gave us eight machines. Every machine does a farm pond every 40 hours nonstop. So we've done about 2,000 of them. And, and the model, again, is the entrepreneur, the farmer who buys into it, pays for most of it. So he pays for 80%, we pay for 20%, and, and he doubles and triples the income. And so once you get their buy-in, after that, they want to do more and more of it. So right. now we're introducing papaya and bamboo, all kinds of stuff in agriculture, right. health, education, livelihood. And so, you know, I think it's endless.